Hello everyone, and welcome back to Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew. Lights, camera, cats. Chapter 5. Another prank? That's awful, Bess cried out. Why would Beazle kidnap Fluffington? We don't know that he did for sure, Nancy said quickly. It is kind of suspicious that he has catnip in his backpack, though. He could have kidnapped Fluffington to get back at his dad for firing him, George suggested. Bess nodded. Definitely. Or he could have kidnapped Fluffington as a dumb prank. Like what he did with the blue stage paint, she added. And didn't Meadows say he pulled a bunch of dumb pranks on his babysitters? She said he put a mouse in his babysitter's backpack. And he put shampoo in another babysitter's smoothie, Nancy recalled. When I'm old enough to babysit, I'm never ever babysitting someone like Beazel, Bess declared. Nancy slung Beazel's backpack over her shoulder. Let's go see what Beazel has to say about this. The girls found Beazel hanging out in his father's office. He was sitting at Mr. Banner's desk and talking on his cell phone. Dude, you should have seen their faces when they found out, Beazel was saying to the person on the other end. They looked like they were going to... He stopped when he noticed Nancy and her friends. Yo, this is a private conversation. What do you want? Nancy lifted Beazel's backpack in the air. You forgot something. I gotta go, Beazel mumbled into the phone. He snapped it shut and held out his hand. Give it to me, curler head, he said to Nancy. Not so fast. What are you doing with catnip, Nancy asked him. Beazle's cheeks flushed red. You looked inside my bag? I'm telling my dad. Your backpack was open, George said. You kidnapped Fluffington, didn't you, Beazle? Bess accused him. Why'd you do it? Did, did you want to get back at your dad for firing you? W what? Beazle sputtered. What are you six-year-olds talking about? We're eight, Nancy corrected him. Did you use this catnip to lure Fluffington? No way, Beazel protested. He got up from his father's desk and walked over to where Nancy and her friends were standing. He grabbed the backpack from Nancy and reached inside. Look, he said, holding up the catnip container. It's not even open. It's sealed shut with tape. Nancy studied the container. Beazel was right. Okay, she said slowly. So maybe you had two things of catnip and you used the other one. Beazel shook his head. This is the only one. I bought it last night at a pet store. I wanted to give it to Fluffington, you know, because of uh, what happened yesterday with the blue stage paint. I thought my dad would stop being mad at me if I gave Fluffington a present. Nancy stared at Beazel. Was he telling the truth? It was hard to tell. Beazel was definitely a major troublemaker. But was he a liar too? Later that afternoon, Nancy leaned back in her beach chair and peered out over the top of her heart-shaped shades. The hotel pool, that is the girl's favorite of the five hotel pools, was packed, mostly with kids. The pool area was landscaped with palm trees and tropical flowers that smelled like honey. Pink flamingos stood one-legged in the grass and preened their feathers. George and Bess were sitting on the other side of Nancy. George was writing in a small spiral-bound notebook. Bess was brushing pretty pink polish on her toenails. Hannah was on the other side of Bess, leafing through a magazine. Hannah glanced up. Is the Clue crew working on the Fluffington case? She asked. Nancy and her friends had filled Hannah in on Fluffington's disappearance. Nancy nodded. George is writing down what we have so far. This is what I've got, George said, running her fingers down one of the, one of the pages in her notebook. Clues, she read out loud. Catnip in Beazle's backpack. Suspects, Beazle. He's a big fat troublemaker. He put blue paint on Fluffington the day before Fluffington's disappearance. Plus, he had the catnip. Beazle, 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 Bess said. She brushed polish onto her right big toe. It all points to Beazle. He must be our kidnapper. We need to find more clues and suspects, Nancy pointed out. Don't forget about motive, George reminded Nancy and Bess. If someone kidnapped Fluffington, then that person had to have a really good reason. Fluffington is a celebrity. The kidnapper would could sell her for a lot of money. That's a motive, Bess said. George wrote this down in her notebook. There's also revenge, she said. Maybe the kidnapper was really mad at Mr. Banner or someone else involved with the aliens next door. Those are both really good net motives, Nancy said. Or maybe the kidnapper had a motive that we haven't even thought about yet. Chapter 6. A New Suspect 
On Wednesday morning, Mr. Drew drove Nancy, George, and Bess to Thunder Chicken Studios. The shooting of yesterday's crowd scene had been canceled due to Fluffington's disappearance. It had been rescheduled for today, even though Fluffington was still missing. The show must go on, Mr. Banner said to the cast and crew as they stood around getting ready for the day. We will find Fluffington. In the meantime, all we can do is act like the professionals we are and make the best movie possible. Come on, people, let's get to work. Everyone scattered. Mr. Drew walked over to Mr. Banner. Nancy and her friends followed. Nancy noticed that Beazle wasn't around. Any news about Fluffington? Nancy's dad asked Mr. Banner. Mr. Banner shook his head. I'm afraid not, Carson. I talked to the police this morning, and they're working on it. In the meantime, I'm trying to keep Fluffington's disappearance out of the newspapers. Otherwise, he lowered his voice, otherwise, I'm going to have a lot of unhappy people on my hands. The president of Crunchies Incorporated, for example. Also, the Aliens producers, who have given us a lot of money to make this movie. And last but not least, Fluffington's owner, Mrs. Rice. She lives in New York City. She's very old. I don't think our health could take this kind of shock. What are you going to do? Mr. Drew asked Mr. Banner. About making the movie, I mean. You can't shoot Fluffington scenes without Fluffington. Actually, I can, Mr. Banner said. He's going to use that CG something, Nancy spoke up. Mr. Banner smiled at her. Smart girl. That's right, Nancy. We'll use CGI, or computer-generated imagery. My CGI guy, Tucker Diaz, is working on it now. Nancy George Bess, you better go see Meadow for your hair and makeup. We're going to try to shoot that crowd scene in about an hour or so, he said. You girls better go, Mr. Drew said. I'll pick you up at five so we can get ready for Pom Pom's birthday party tonight, he winked. Okay, Daddy, Nancy said. Mr. Banner had invited them to the celebrity dog's birthday party. Nancy had never been to a real Hollywood party. She couldn't wait. Nancy hugged her dad goodbye. Then she, George, and Bess headed in the direction of the dressing room area. On the way, they packed Tucker Diaz. He was working at his computer station. His face was so close to the computer screen that his nose was almost touching it. Hi, Tucker, Nancy called out. Tucker barely looked up. What? Oh, hey, hi, girls. Mr. Banner told us that you're super busy, Bess said. Because of Fluffington being missing, George added. Tucker yawned and rubbed his eyes. Oh. I've been here since 4 a.m. trying to get these computer-generated Fluffington images right, he said. So, what do you think? He leaned back and let the girls see the computer screen. Nancy gasped. An image of Fluffington was on the screen. It looked just like her. Then Tucker pressed some keys on his computer keyboard. The computer Fluffington cleaned its whiskers with its paw. It chased a mouse. It jumped up in the air. It lay down and closed its eyes. That's amazing, Bess exclaimed. It looks exactly like Fluffington. Tucker beamed. It's like I've been trying to tell Mr. Banner. CGI is way better than the real thing. Now I finally have a chance to prove my point, he quickly added. Not that I'm happy Fluffington is missing, of course. Nancy frowned. That was a strange thing for Tucker to say, she thought. Then Nancy noticed something even stranger. Tucker had kitty hairs on his t-shirt. A lot of kitty hairs. He also had some scratches on both arms. Could they be kitty scratches? Nancy wondered. Could Tucker be Fluffington's kidnapper? Nancy frowned. Tucker scratches definitely could be kitty scratches. If he kidnapped Fluffington, then maybe Fluffington scratched him while she was trying to escape. Poor Fluffington, she thought. Nancy tried to see if the kitty hairs on Tucker's t-shirt were white like Fluffington's, but his t-shirt was light blue, so it was hard to make out the color of the kitty hairs. She needed to get a sample. Nancy glanced around. She spotted a roll of tape on a nearby desk. She walked over to the desk, making sure Tucker wasn't watching, and very quietly tore off a piece of tape. George stared at Nancy and mouthed the words, What are you doing? Nancy put her finger to her lips. She would explain everything to George and Bess later. Nancy walked back to where Tucker was sitting. Bess was in the middle of asking Tucker questions. While Tucker answered, Nancy carefully placed the sticky part of the tape on his t-shirt. She made sure to aim for his sleeve, which was loose and baggy. That way, she wouldn't actually have to touch him and make him suspicious. Just as carefully, she peeled the tape away from his sleeve. 
Something was stuck to the sticky part. It was a bunch of long hairs, long white kitty hairs. Okay. Well, you can tune in next time for Chapter 7. I hope you're liking the story as much as I am. I'll see you next time.